features. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The screws. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? <sighs> sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you, too. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> no, Lick. We can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies! That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zemka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world who are friends with the only kid in the whole world who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! And who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. 
Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only No. The one and only Nolan. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super! You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of carboniterous. And now a little bit of bread and butterous. And finally, beard of fumerous. Chusaka! Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nullix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nullix, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts the battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First, we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie. 
that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> Can you believe that fixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A Robotozoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Ah, uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying. And robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Ah! Uh, what was that? Uh, look. You know... <gasps> he destroyed him! Nolik, stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Ugh. <sighs> I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. When your TV has broken, when your cell phone has croaked, your laptop's barely working, the kettle's had a stroke. Don't ask us where we're going, for it's known far and wide.
Well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly. Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. <laughs> I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yay! Can you believe that fixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. Detector. Suka! Shh, quiet. I'm on a stakeout here. Who are you staking out? Huh? Tom Thomas. We've got a bet that he won't be able to survive three days without any TV. Really? Can I be on the stakeout with you? Shh. Suka! Thomas, just tell me you didn't. I didn't. Why didn't you? It's because I... Mm, I'm not Tom Thomas. What? I'm Tom's brother. That's totally not true. We know Tom Thomas doesn't have a brother. I meant his first cousin. Then how come you two look so much alike? It's because our mothers are twins. So what should we call you? Who, me? Uh, John Johnson. And who are you, by the way? As if you don't know who we are. This room is beautiful. Sure is bigger than mine. I don't believe you. You're telling a lie. And what is your proof? Maybe he's not lying. There's a way to check it. How? Yeah, how? With a lie detector. You'll see. A lie detector is a device that is used to help figure out if someone is telling the truth or if they are lying. You see, when someone is lying, they always get a little bit nervous. Even though we might not see it, we know that a liar's heart beats a little faster, his breathing changes, and he sweats. A lie detector can pick up on all of these little things. And that's how a lie detector can be used to help find the truth. But you don't have a lie detector. But we know how a lie detector works, don't we? Or are you scared, Tom Thomas? What's that for? To listen to your pulse. How come? So I'll be able to check how fast your heart is beating. And Nolik? He's gonna keep an eye on how often you blink. And what are you doing with the egg? The egg is an old African method. If you're not telling the truth, your hand will automatically squeeze the egg. And so, the egg will crack. Well, my egg won't crack. We'll see about that. Humans have tried to come up with all sorts of ways to find out the truth. For instance, in ancient China, they would put some dry rice in a person's mouth when they told him the crime they believed he committed. Then, they checked the rice. If the rice stayed dry, they believed he had committed the crime. In ancient India, a person had to bang on a gong while answering a judge's questions. If he started banging the gong louder, then it was believed that he was trying to hide the truth. And in Europe, if one knight accused another of lying, then they would just take part in a duel. 
Whoever won that one was said to be on the side of truth. No, it's not easy to hide the truth, but sometimes it can be even harder to find it. Answer yes or no. You got that? Do you have two ears? Don't you have eyes? Just yes or no. Yes. Answer, are you a girl? Hey, come on. Yes or no? No. Where do you find such dumb questions? We just have to check what happens to your heart when you tell the truth to us. All right, now answer this. Do you know the Fixies? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, no. I forgot. His pulse is speeding up. Are you Tom Thomas? No. Ah, uh, his pulse is racing. And his eyes have started blinking. And the Fixies, tell us where you learned about him. From Tom Thomas. He couldn't have told you about us. It's a secret. You could. Not true. It's true. It's not true. Yes, it is. Hey, look! The egg cracked! Just give up, John Johnson. All right, I'm Tom Thomas, guys. Tish! Is it really possible to know if you lied just by measuring your pulse? With pulse, you really can. But you probably couldn't with the egg. You tricked me then. That wasn't nice. You weren't tricked. John Johnson was. Huh, you know what? I think you've got to get checked out on this lie detector. Ha! I don't think so. You need to get ready to give me my wish. Because you're the one that lost the bet. Can you believe that pixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The Short Circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not gonna play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down, this is a museum, you know? <laughs> What a great museum guide you are! You know absolutely nothing! How can you say you don't know? I know! I'd like to run a test here, on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, don't touch. touch! Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks, and they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they are turned on, and bare wires should never, ever be touched. And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look, now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <gasps> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, 
and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off <clears throat> everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. <laughs> Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out, or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah! And we have... Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait! I thought you were fixing the television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. <laughs> It's hard to see their features. They're tiny, infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. <gasps> the ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik. Here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool! I'll be the captain! This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Did it break? No, it's all Tadish! It's not close to Tadish! Take a look how this mask broke! Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it! Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lick! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Ooh, that's better, thank you guys. 
We sailors ugh, never let our friend down. <laughs> no, Lick, you gotta get out. You'll get sick from that stinky air. <sighs> I can't get loose. I I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look, what an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did, achoo! Well, all right then. Do your homework and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik! I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik, where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. <laughs> Oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look 
look in the bathroom. <laughs> hmm. I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Sick of the night, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Armor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times. But the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds. And if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Great, Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Uh... Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Ooh, thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh, before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? Nolik went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Uh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> Combination lock. Ah, he's home. No lick. Are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. No lick. Is that you? Hey, come on! That's not fair! You saw! 
Let me go again. I don't want to. You want me to play hide and seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Wow, awesome game. Tom Thomas, can I play your game? Uh-uh, because I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five. I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination. And now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? <sighs> the code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. <laughs> A simple code lock is built with a few disks that have numbers on them. In the center of each disk is a hole with a notch. When all of the disks are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the disks to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. Looks like we gotta take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. Nolik, where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not gonna help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? And I won't be so greedy anymore. All right, you broke me down. Only as soon as we're done, you're gonna let me play with the game. Right. We'll start turning the discs one at a time, and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop! Turn the next one now! Stop! Stop! Now try! Yes! Adieu! Tideesh! Hooray! And your code was really simple. Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place, but don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it, I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show off. You're just some greedy, oops. Sorry, once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. We're not bothering you, are we? Can you jump a little easier? You're shaking the whole desk. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let.
let their secret out. The instructions. doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah. Instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! My battery! <laughs> instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got your new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like I haven't seen a chair? Well, Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without them. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as in ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. For a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look. We need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is. You gotta find it. I already looked everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. No, look, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Ah, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have, uh, must have what? Must have what? Look, here it is. Ah. Ah. Now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. 
No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas, it says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be a dummy, instructions are for you. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Them clock stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The electric train. Woo 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 woo. Suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. <laughs> if help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the Fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Pew, 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 pew. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the break. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, 
the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer, when suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O oh people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out.